Hello there, everybody. It's been a long time since I've recorded anything like this for this channel, but with the purchase of my Sony DCR DVD 108 Handycam, I decided it would be a perfect opportunity to record a little test video and see how this thing works, and I figured there is no better example test video to record than about this particular Dell Dimension B110 computer system. Now the very last video I uploaded on this channel was about five years ago, a little over that, and it was about this exact computer. I had just recently picked it up at the time, and I had begun to experiment with it, and it has come a long way since then. I've made several different upgrades, which I'll detail in this video. But this is a Dell Dimension B110, released in 2006, probably one of the most uninteresting computers to have ever been released, especially by Dell. But I have kind of turned it into something else, so the model number of B110 can only really be used loosely now. The original specs of this thing contained a Celeron D325 microprocessor, as you can see advertised there, as well as Windows XP, preferably Home Edition, as well as what was likely 256 megabytes or 512 megabytes of memory, likely DDR333 megahertz or 400 megahertz, as well as an Intel 865 chipset. I have upgraded this thing past recognizability to a B110, and uh, some of the first ones I'll go over is the added DVD-ROM drive, which is this top drive here. I believe it's a 24-speed. I have had a lot of issues getting this thing to work. I cannot get it to read a DVD. I have not tried a CD, as this drive on the bottom here is a compact disc rewritable drive. But that one seems to work fine. The original CD-ROM that would have been up here, I decided to take out to try to implement a DVD drive to be able to read the mini 1.4 gigabyte DVDs that this Handycam uses and exports video onto. So I have done a little bit of work with the optical drives, even though that top drive is not fully functioning. I have also installed 3 gigabytes of DDR400 megahertz memory. You can see those sticks right there. You can barely make them out, but there are three of them. The fourth slot is unpopulated because 32-bit operating systems do not recognize more than three gigabytes of memory, so upgrading it past that is rather a waste, and I feel it can be better put to use somewhere else. I have also upgraded the graphics card from what used to be in this thing. I'm not sure if the card that was in there previously was there when I acquired the machine. I really don't have that great of a memory. But this was the card that was in there prior. This is an ATI Radeon 9200 with 128 megabytes of DDR video memory. And this card worked perfectly fine for a while until today, whenever I tried to boot this machine up and it was artifacting all over the place, which I will provide some video of here. This thing's having a grand old time. Let's see what happens in Linux whenever I boot it into there. But we're in. But we're also having these same strange artifacts all over the place. Could be a graphics card issue, could be a system memory issue. Garbage showing up on that message there. But otherwise, this card We'll probably be put in the scrap bin. I don't really have too much of a use for it. And it probably doesn't work anymore anyway, even if I tried to clean it out. But I decided to put in this 256 megabyte DDR3 VRAM variant 
of the NVIDIA GeForce, come on, focus, GeForce 7800 GS. And this card has worked pretty admirably. I got the drivers installed on XP and seems to be working just fine. Now, you can also see I took some creative liberties with the installation of the hard drive. In my previous video, I believe I had it mounted up here where the floppy drive used to be and the mounting cage was strangely missing even whenever I obtained this computer. And I'm not exactly sure why I moved the hard drive from there, but it is now down at the bottom of the case, secured in by a singular screw. So you can see you can move that thing pretty freely. But that is a 40 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive. And it runs perfectly fine for now. I would like to upgrade it with something a little bit bigger, but I'm not too worried about it at the moment. Now. The biggest upgrade that I have put into this computer, by far, is the motherboard. And you may not be able to recognize it at a glance, it looks just like any other Dell motherboard, which was probably originally an Intel desktop board that bears the Dell branding. But, this motherboard, you can see, has that AGP slot that 7800GS is slotted into, which is something that was notably missing on the B110, and also the 3000, which was the B110's superior predecessor. Now this motherboard is of course not out of a B110, but if we give this computer a power on, it is registered as a Dimension 4600. And I've also dual booted this computer well, that was a mistake. I have dual booted this computer with both Microsoft Windows XP Professional as well as a derivative of Linux known as Lubuntu version 16.04 which I wanted to test in case it might run a little bit better on this machine. But strangely, and it's probably because this revision well, this version of the Lubuntu software was released in 2019. So it is drastically newer than any of the components in this computer and is probably asking a little bit too much of that Pentium 4 processor with its single core. While Lubuntu doesn't run very well at all, Windows XP zips through it, even with that old 40 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive. I have installed you can see down there both Mozilla Firefox and Opera. I believe the version of Firefox is 59 and Opera is 26. Firefox definitely runs a little bit better than Opera and I think it is a newer release and Firefox definitely can load more web pages. I've also installed the two-wire wireless manager for this little wireless network adapter I have here. I have used Ethernet with this thing, this is just somewhat more convenient. You can get this thing connected to the internet, which I will do so now. If it would, uh, there we are. Go ahead and, uh, open Firefox here. Now even though this thing does run Windows XP rather well, it is still a nearly 20 year old computer so it doesn't exactly zip through any modern or even modern-ish programs but I'll just give you an example of what it's capable of. I'll go ahead and type in YouTube right here and basic web searches do run perfectly fine you can see it loads Google and the results clicking on YouTube itself it brings up this message with please update your browser which this can uh, this is the one of the reasons I did install Lubuntu onto this system is for some uh, some upgraded and more modern releases of web browsers but for everything else XP is just overall better in my opinion for this particular system let's see if we can pull up well, Wikipedia 
Let's see what it can do here. Maybe it'll be able to load this. There we are. And we'll pull up the Dell Dimension Wikipedia article. And that'll load that. And you can see it loads basic web pages without a ton of, you know, HTML videos and GIFs and all that stuff. It loads it rather well. So for basic web browsing, this computer is still possible to use, although I wouldn't recommend it with Windows XP being out of support for over 10 years now. But that's enough of that. I've installed a few games on here to test. One of which being Quake 3 Arena, you can see up there. As well as Motocross Madness 2 and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Now I'm not entirely sure about the solution for this yet, but most games do not run or do not load properly on this computer. And I think it's probably a driver issue that I need to diagnose a little bit further. But at least we have Minesweeper, Pinball, and Solitaire. That's pretty much all I had for this computer. I will continue to work on some upgrades for it, notably the non-functioning DVD-ROM drive. I do hope to get that working. As well as a potential microprocessor upgrade if I can find a PGA 478 socket CPU clocked higher than 2.66 gigahertz. But, for now, I think it runs just fine with the processor that's currently in there. But yeah, this was just mostly a test video to try out my new Sony Handycam. And, uh, well, for anyone that watched the video from five years ago, and, uh, wanted a little bit of a follow-up, maybe a little late, but here you go. And, uh... That's all I really have for now, so uh, that's about it. See ya.